Morning, Fabian. Morning. An eventful ends to Sunday's match. We didn't hear from you afterwards, but you're still unbeaten. What were your reflections on that match against Forest? Yeah, a little bit similar to, to the match uh, one week before against uh, Ipswich. I think uh, we did enough to, to win this game. In the end, if you if you don't make the, the third goal, then you have to defend better and you can't concede um, these easy goals and uh, then we have to to improve. But um, it's always in life a thing of the perspective, how you want to see it. So on the one side, you can say, yeah, we, we didn't win two games in a row where we should normally deserve to win or you say you're still unbeaten. So uh, I'm, I'm more the direction to the positive one. I see always that the, the bottle is just half full and not half empty. And that's why we keep staying positive and seeing the positive things in the situation. So no first defeat yet, but you have had a first in English football in the red card. Can you clear up what it was for? And have you spoken to anyone in the refs organization, the PGMOL about it? So uh, at the beginning, I didn't, I didn't know for, for what I get the, the red card. And then um, I, I talked to, to Howard Webb, yes, um, because in the end I heard that I get this red card for stepping on the pitch. And um, I think if you if you give a red card for this, I think you have to ban a lot of coaches during the the games because it happens in a in an emotional phase of or emotional situation of the game. It will happen that you make a step on on the pitch. Um, of course, we are we are all role models and we have to act like this. But I think sometimes you also should bring out your emotions. Um, in this case, it was like just to protect my player. In this case, it was uh, to protect Joao Pedro because for me it was a, a hard tackle on him. And um, if I don't show emotions there, I, me as a player, I would say the coach isn't interested in me. So that's why I, I tried to show emotions in, in some part of the games. Can you tell us what Howard Webb said to you? Yeah, I think um, the positive thing is like they are very open. So Howard Webb is also very open. He listens um, to me and um, it gives me like a clear, a clear explanation of the situation, how the referee saw the scene, how the fourth official saw the scene. I think it's it's very important to to have a good uh, discussion and a clear discussion how I see the things, how they uh, see the things, because in the end um, we should have a good uh, relationship. Of course, sometimes I don't agree with with, with the with the. Um, what the, what the referee um, for what the referee gives a foul or not um, but in the end uh, he also won't agree with all what I'm doing on the sideline but uh, for me it's very important that we have a respectful relationship and uh, the exchange with, with Howard was very respectful and uh, very empathic and very listening and um, in the end I hope that we will find the right solutions yeah last one on this so you've got the FA charge you have till tomorrow to respond to that do you contest that do you accept it and do you know what the punishment would be if, if you did accept it so I know what the, what the fine will be and uh, I also know that um, I will be on, on the sideline against uh, Chelsea and I think that's the most positive thing that I can support my team that can help my team so of course I also have to learn out of this situation how fast you you can get a red card here in, in this league and it's a learning process for me as well but of course the the fine um, we, we, we will accept yeah and so from the outcome of that whole situation Jao Pedro looked in a bit of discomfort after that tackle how is he yeah for me this tackle, of course, you can see it in, in TV or in television, but you have to see it on, on the pitch, how how hard it was, in, in which dynamic it was. I think the TV can't can't give you the right the right uh, dynamic of, of what happens in, in real in real life, and uh, it was a it was a hard tackle for me. And of course, Zhao had some problems after the game. He, he still has some problems. You have to go week for week with him um, but uh, I don't think that he will be an option for, for the weekend OK and maybe, maybe further than, than that potentially yeah then we have to uh, keep looking so I'm not sure how long he will be out I think uh, that Zhao is a good healer 
and um, I'm convinced that he will be back soon. But of course, uh, also with this player, we can't take take any risk. Um, we all know that uh, he's a he's a player who can make the difference for us. But of course, uh, we also have like uh, several other options and several other good options. And uh, now we try to replace him as good as we can and uh, give him like a. A good rehab, and I'm sure he won't be out for so long, hopefully. Yeah. Any other team news in terms of injuries? Anyone new? Anyone coming back? No, I don't think so. Of course, Yasin Ayari, after his um, illness, he will be back on, on the pitch. But um, the others, no. I asked about Soddy March a few weeks ago. We can still see all the videos of him training and Brian Gruder back in training as well, it seems. Is there a plan for them, penciled in maybe for a, an under-21s match or something? Or do you take it week by week? So, uh, Brian, he, he was out for for five, six weeks. I think um, that he will be be back in the squad very soon. Maybe already uh, at, the, at the weekend, we will see how fast he gets... Um, reintegrated in the team, how fast he adapts to the intensity of the training. And then he might be an option for for Saturday. And uh, with Solly, it's unbelievable how good he is adapting. We, we're all surprised uh, in which shape he is. He looks very sharp. And um, there we have to, have to make now the next decision. What is the next step for him? Is it uh, maybe playing an under-21 game? But there is also important which under-21 game he's, he's playing and uh, what is the best for him and also where he feels like comfortable because he has to feel comfortable after after this long injury that um, he will make the next right step. And uh, it's important to make it step by step and not to to do two or three steps in, in one time. And um, I'm very happy how, how he's doing. And I think he, he also feels very happy. He has a lot of energy and you also see it in, in the training, which impact he can have on, on the team. Yeah, and last one for me, the draw last night for the Carabao Cup, Liverpool. So it looks like you probably played them twice in four days. Cause I think they're playing on a Sunday before. Uh, Alice least at home, but it's a tricky draw. How do you assess that? <laughs> Yeah, um, I had a similar situation last season with my former club um, where we played, I think, in in Düsseldorf and then three days later in, in a cup game against uh, Düsseldorf. So it's always like interesting how you prepare the first match, then how, how it went the first match. If you do some changes, if not, if you change a player, if you change a tactic, it's a little bit like a, a tactical thing, but also the thing, how, how fit are the player in. Uh, in, in these cases and it will be very interesting not to, not only to play uh, two games in a row against uh, Liverpool just to play against Liverpool I think will be will be an interesting thing um, they had a great start in the in the season they have a, a great new coach um, but I think now we have to focus on, on Chelsea because that's a it's a very big challenge um, I think for me one of the best teams in the league so far and uh, we are really looking forward for it Fabian, um, Jack Kinshelwood had ice on his ankle after the game. Is Was that a precaution? Is he OK? It was a fast uh, regeneration after the game. So uh, fast treatment for his ankles and uh, no, he will be fine. Good stuff. You, you've mentioned Chelsea there. I, I spoke to the Bournemouth manager a couple of games ago. He said they're one of the toughest teams to, to analyse, to, to prepare for, because they've got so many good players and so many different ways of, of using them. Obviously, we've had a couple of games since then. Are they getting easier to, to prepare for or are they still a tough challenge to, to just get your head around what they could do? So, on the one side, of course, you, you have to analyse them by, by what they're doing tactical on, on the pitch and they have uh, very good solutions. They have a great uh, goalkeeper who starts trying to, to build up uh, the game from, from their back, always with his, his feet. He's a very good um, football player. And then, of course, they have a good positioning in possession. And so normally open with a 3-2, but still very fluent. Uh, I think Enzo is also dropping in the midfield. And then on the other side, besides these tactical things, they have like great individual players. So you have to keep focusing on where you can create a good match. So um, don't create a mismatch. Try to 
bring players in, in personal duels where you think that would be a good match. So, for example, against the wingers, who do you bring as a, as a fullback against uh, Sancho, against Marueke? They're both very fast, both very good dribblers. Who do you bring against um, Jackson, who's a, who's a fast striker, who's also good in possession? So, on the one side, of course, the tackle thing. On the other side, trying to, to find good matches, um, fewer players to, to their players. And then, of course, I think beside that, how you want to press them, it's also very important to, to find a good solution in, uh, in possession for our own. So how is the match plan with the ball? Because you can't go there and try to only defend. You have to go there and uh, have a lot of courage with the ball and try to build up um, with a clear idea and with a good positioning because then they also have to defend. And uh, this will be the thing what we will try to do. You go up against excellent strikers every week in the Premier League, but Nicholas Jackson is yeah. in extraordinary form. Is there anything that he does that is unique to him that's going to pose a different challenge to normally? So I think he is a full package, so he wants to combine. So sometimes he's uh, getting more in the tense space where he can combine with, with his teammates, where he's there with, with Palma with Caicedo, with uh, Enzo Fernandez. And on the other side, he's also very fast, so he can attack attack the, the back from, from us. And uh, this mix, this balance, uh, makes him very dangerous for us. And of course, he's a, he's a top striker, and at the moment, he's a, he's in very good shape. Uh, so you can't defend him in a, in a one against one. So you have to always try to, on one side, get pressure on the ball so that they can't play the long ball in, in the back from us. And on the other side, you always uh, need to to find um, a good balance how close you you want to defend them and uh, how you want to defend the the back of of our of our back four. And for Brighton on Sunday, Karu Matoma had a, a spell where he was such a threat down that left hand side. And yeah, you know, with his injuries, I personally hadn't seen him in that sort of form for a long time. I wondered how impressed you've been and if there was a moment in the last couple of weeks where you thought, oh, I'm going to enjoy working with this player? I enjoyed working with him from the first day <laughs> because uh, he's, a, he's a great guy, very humble, um, trying to, to do everything to, to improve. And um, I think after his, his injury, he needed a little bit of time to, to come back, to, to find to his uh, old shape. But um, we don't put a lot of pressure on him. I think he, he knows the best what to do to get back in his shape and he's doing it better game for game. Of course, um, in the end, we want that he scores and making assists. I think he had uh, some great chances in, in the last games, um, but he, he was a little bit unlucky, but he's keeping trying. He He's always there on the second post. He tries to have the easy tap in, but he also tries to, to go one against one and, and make a shot on the goal. So he's very flexible. He He's improving with his crosses. So I think it's, it's still in a in the process and the development where he is. And um, I'm very happy how he's, which situation, which uh, shape he is at the moment, but we still try to improve in, in, in every phase of the game. To my very amateurish, untrained eye, his first touch looked amazing, immaculate. Is, yeah. When you're working with 25 guys a day who've all got an excellent first touch, does it still stand out? Is it special? I think in some ways his first touch is special. Um, but of course, it's also like a, a thing why I'm like convinced you can train. So how you pass, how you take the first touch. And if you do a lot of these exercises and training, I think you can improve. But of course, uh, Mitoma has an, an outstanding first touch. He's an outstanding player. He's a, a player who can make the difference. But again, also for these players, there are still things where, where we can improve. And the thing is that he wants to improve. He doesn't say I'm... I'm finished with my development. He, he's still searching for, for, for potentials, and that's uh, what is really impressive with him. Good stuff. Good luck, Fabian. You put Jack Hinchwood into the midfield at the weekend. Um, his performance and what you see in training does that make you think maybe twice about where you might use him going forward as well as at fullback? Yeah, it's tough because uh, he can play several positions and several positions really good. So I think. Against um, Nottingham, he made an outstanding performance in, in the midfield. He understands the game. He's very clever in in recognizing the spaces, 
how I need to to open the passing lines, how I need to to move in which space to to find the free teammate, and uh, it only works if you really understand the game, and he does it in a in an outstanding way. And on the other side, he also performs quite good as a fullback. So um, it's it's tough for me to to bring him in the best position because um, I think he has several best positions. And uh, in the end, I think we have to make a decision where he helps the team the most in which in which situation of the game we are and uh, how the opponents are. I talked about the the matches uh, with the with the opponents. Therefore, we we need to find again the best position for him against Chelsea. Just with regards to Joao, um, how important is it to have someone like Evans starting to look a little bit sharper on the pitch, getting more minutes as well as another option? I know you've got Jorginho as well, but uh, how important is it to have that that option more available to you going forward for the next few weeks? Yeah, very important because Evan is a is a player who is a clear target player in in, in the box, so. He knows how, how to move in the box. Um, he has a good nose for for some situations. He's he's there when when he needs an easy tap in. He's there when he needs to make a header. So uh, he looks very good also in training. Um, of course, against um, Nottingham, we were thinking about bringing him a little bit earlier um, to to the game because we know his, his strength. But uh, in the end, the most important thing is that that he's fit that he's training every day that he doesn't feel his injury anymore and that he's getting back to to his best shape and uh, therefore we, we need to help him we need to give him also ga- game time for sure but um, I'm really keen on on working with him because I think he can has a, has a great impact on our team with regards to Chelsea when you've spoken about them today you, you've used the word pace and speed yeah. and fast quite a lot today how do you counteract that because you play quite a high defensive line is it about pressure when they have the ball further up the pitch is that going to be the key to success on Saturday yeah so avoid that um, they have time on the ball and can play a long ball in behind so I think that's that's very important and then if you get pressure I think then then you can defend uh, with this high line because it's all about compactness on the other side I think there will be also moments in the game where we have to defend in a low block so a low block means that that you go and give them the the space behind our back four so we have to to stay very low and and stay compact in the end it's all about like compactness so when you go high high pressure you need to have a high line otherwise you're not compact if you go low it's the same with the striker. The striker have to to come back so that you are compact. Um, otherwise, it won't work. And um, the goal we conceded about again against uh, Nottingham was not the the mistake from the back four. It was not the thing that we stand this high. It was more that we don't get pressure and that we open the middle. And uh, that's the thing you can't do if you if you want to play with the high line. And uh, we have to learn out of it. Just finally. We have a new coach here at the at Brighton. They have a new coach in Enzo Maresca. What do you know about him? And have you come across him before? What have you made of what he's done in a very short space of time at a club that's gone through a lot of transition recently? So I don't know him personal, but I think he, he had a great start and uh, he plays a very good f- style of, of football. Of course, he was also like great players, but in the end, he brings them in the in the right positions, and uh, they're very fluent. And they have a lot of self confidence. So it's the only thing what I can what I can say from from the distance that uh, what I see in the games is is quite impressive, and it will be a big challenge for us to to compete against them on on Saturday.